Hello, my name is Spencer Patton, and for the purpose of today's talk, I would first like to ask my audience members if you could pull out your cell phones real quick and place them in this bag. Yeah, just come on up here. Along with that, I'd like your email addresses and those passwords. Also, um, just have any of your personal information, addresses, phone numbers that you use, and credit card numbers and the password, the little security code back, three digit. Need that for online purchases? Just kidding. All right, so you know I'm joking, uh, but there are companies out there who are constantly asking for this type of information on a daily, and it's most likely uh, a probability that you have even uh, given this information out to these companies. Today I would like to show you not only how these companies use this information, how they gather it from you, but also why they do this. This process of data collection is all around us, but I believe that large technology companies such as Google and Facebook are pushing the ethical boundaries of data mining today. We would all be ignorant to think that marketers are not trying harder and harder to reach us in unique and different ways. Um, services such as Facebook, businesses, ad service, and Google's AdSense have made advertising easier than ever. On Facebook's website, facebook.com slash business, they say that you can spend just $5 a week on advertising, or you can spend $500,000 on advertising. So it's simple, it's easy, and it is cheap. And it's most likely a chance that people your same age or your same social class are forwarding these ads and putting them out there for almost no cost for their businesses. Google, another company, has recently expanded from being a search engine company to being more of a hardware development company. And this is just another outlet that they were able to gather data from consumers. So this is the Google Mini. Um, this is the Pixel Book, and this is the Pixel. So you can see they have virtual assistants, they have phones, they have laptops, even running their own operating systems, Chrome OS and Android. So hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of a grasp on who Google and Facebook are and what their reach is. So begin analyzing whether these companies' data mining uh, techniques and applications are ethical or unethical. We need to first be aware of why marketers use these uh, ad sources or, and how they use these ad sources. So in the book, Introduction to Media Literacy, the author, James Potter, describes that there are three different ways that marketers get to customers. Um, so this is through a process called segmentation. The first is going to be geographic segmentation, which as you can probably infer is um, based on your geographic location. And the second is demographic segmentation, which divides audiences based on their age, sex, ethnic group, anything like that. And Finally, the most scary one is the psychographic segmentation, which is going to divide market based on their psychological and lifestyle characteristics. This could be anything from healthy habits to a gamer who sits in his room and drinks Red Bull all day. So this means that data is really digging deep, as you can see with the psychographic uh, anal analyzations. So this means that since there are no set rules for this data collection and the companies can kind of just cross and uh, interpret um, your needs and your wants, then we have to kind of look at this and determine a boundary that we are going to set for ourselves um, as what is ethical and what is not. I'm personally okay with sharing my locations with companies uh, to get targeted ads based on my uh, location and I'm also okay with um, people giving me ads based on my sex or based on my age or ethnic group. I'd rather see a bunch of uh, commercials about uh, men's deodorant than I would uh, some feminine products uh, just popping up on my phone in the middle of uh, scrolling through Instagram. But um, 
some people are not okay with companies knowing these things. So the things that I that do make me uncomfortable, though, um, are companies hiding the options to opt out of ads, cross-referencing data you know, on buying habits and media consumption to be able to influence uh, people's interests, and also the building of complete profiles per consumer. Communication is heavily rooted in online transactions, as I said earlier, and in today's world, there's such a large amount of data being pulled from our interactions online. For example, Google reports in their app settings that their location services create a map of where you go with your logged in devices. So if I'm logged into Google on my phone like I am right now, they can, they can track where I am at and send me ads based on my location. So like I said, I'm personally okay with this, but the problem that I have is whenever people are not and they're not informed about their decision for location services. So Facebook is one example of this. Uh, these are actually from my account. This is a, a recent search I did. So I went to go check if my location history was turned on and it was off. Um, but I did see that uh, Facebook actually logged where I was at and when I accessed that. The companies want to be able to use this data to not only just have that for geographical data, but they also want to be able to cross-reference that data that they scrape with your online interactions to create a perfect marketing platform for businesses that are big and are small. So while we do hand out this information on a basic level, the expertise of professional data analysts can pull out actually more information than we give them, such as our you know, phone numbers, email addresses, and things like that. One primary example of this is in 2012, uh, instance of a father receiving ads in the mail from Target, um, and they were not quite what he would have expected. So the article name from Forbes.com is how Target figured out a teen girl was pregnant before her father did. Uh, this fe featured the work of Andrew Pohl, a Target analyst. Uh, the author, Kashmir Hill, wrote that Pohl was able to identify about 25 products that, when analyzed together, allowed him to assign each shopper a pregnancy prediction score. So they were able to find out whenever a woman was going to give birth and send them ads uh, or coupons to get them to start buying their uh, products at Target. So this was in 2012. Since then, the amount of data being able to be pulled from us uh, based on our basic level data, it has only increased. Uh, for example, the profiling abilities of these companies have also uh, become a really large responsibility. Uh, CNN reported in mid-2018 that Inf uh, information that shows that the boundaries of profiling have since increased and been pushed even further. Uh, while you might think it's bad enough that Facebook users are being uh, subject to so much data mining, uh, Mark Zuckerberg actually, uh, the Facebook's, cre uh, Facebook's creator, said that the company collects data about people have, who have not signed up for Facebook for what he calls security purposes. That statement raised concerns about whether the company has shadow profiles with information about non-users. So think about all of the people who are getting on Facebook. They are all uh, users and they should be aware of the uh, data that's being collected on them. But with this kind of uh, information, it kind of becomes even more scary for people that have not even really been users or um, profile owners in Facebook. So building this kind of profile not only collects data on consumers as a whole, but it, it specifically identifies each person based on their unique interests, life decisions, and lifestyles. And if this is not creepy enough, I recently found out that my Google Home Mini that I bought uh, collects data on what I say to it and stores it on my email address that I have with Google. And um, Google calls this uh, group that they put us in, an affinity audience, and this was reported by Quartz.com. 
So this kind of just reaches over the boundaries into a territory that I'm not really comfortable with. The average consumer is not aware of the amount of information that is being pulled from them, uh, and they are giving this information away willingly, thinking that not much can be done with it. So I ask, if Target could identify when a woman was going to give birth, then what other kinds of information could large tech giants such as Facebook and Google pull from consumers in today's world? This is why it's very important to be aware of the data that you're handing out whenever you're making accounts or you're browsing the internet. I believe that these companies are so popular that they should be held at a higher standard. They have all of these consumers. They should be more transparent about their marketing techniques. So these companies aren't lying to us. They're just being very misleading. And this is where I think that the use of data mining strategies by Google and Facebook are truly pushing the ethics of data mining. The increasing amount of data that they are able to pull from the consumer identifies more than the consumer would actually know. While this does not seem to affect us directly, we must look at the influence it has on our buying habits, on our interests, on things that we do on the internet, or any kind of media that we consume. We have to look at the techniques that are being used, geographic segmentation, demographic segmentation, and psychographic segmentation. Being aware of these ways will help us to be able to discern whether uh, what we are buying is based on impulse or it's based on um, true thoughts that are coming from our head and not being planted. So. If I, who had have little influence over your buying habits, was able to ask you in the beginning uh, for your information, and you say no, then why would you let big companies who have a larger amount of influence have this kind of information? Thank you.